Good morning everyone, long time no see. Let me know if the video and the sound is fine and let's get started coding something. Happy to see everybody. Meanwhile, I will be uh, kind of arranging the windows a little bit, but I'm waiting for the feedback from you. Good morning everyone. Okay. Kind of wanna get this window out. Right. This seems reasonable. Hey everybody, happy to see you guys. Uh, so, I actually I had a hard time, so I was sick for, for a while and then I had a hard time thinking of like what exactly I should be streaming about because there's been so many streams, could you believe it, it was over 150 videos already on this channel and all of those about mostly different WebGL animations and some of them not WebGL but anyway, different ideas, it's like more than 100 different ideas, so it's crazy and it, it was a lot of pressure but then I watched, uh, kind of, when I was sick, I started watching Uthermal, uh, the StarCraft streamer uh, videos. And I kind of I kind of got into that attitude that I should just have fun. And this is the most important thing. So today I'm just going to be creating the thing that, well, I had some fun creating. Uh, yeah, some questions. Oh, I thank you for kind words for the uh, React 3 Fiber video. I'm good, thank you. Hey everyone. All right, so uh, it's, it's like a kind of a tradition and on this channel to share like where, where, where are you exactly? Like which locations are you watching this stream from? And I'm gonna get started immediately. So, uh, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just run, probably I'd like to give a shout out to one of the nice tools that I've been using lately. You know, there's a canvas, uh, okay, not this, canvas, uh, let's switch the screens. There's a canvas sketch library by the Matt Deloria, which I've been using uh, like a lot. Uh, this is canvas sketch util, but there's also canvas sketch uh, library itself. Um, all right, it's gotta be a link somewhere, right? So there's a canvas sketch library. Uh, which I love to use and uh, which is just an amazing library to produce some videos or some files to be drawn on real paper by the plotter, by the robots, anything creative and generative. But it's been kind of abandoned. You could see that some of the updates are like five years old already, even though those are not important files, to be honest. But uh, really, it's not, it hasn't been updated in a long time. There's a lot of issues like 58 open and there are a couple of a couple of libraries which are kind of overcoming those troubles and are creating on top of it and one of them is by uh, I should call a fellow of mine by the Da Inc. Uh, he's an amazing artist as well he creates a lot of graphics and he created a library kind of the same thing as a kind of a sketch but different. So I'm going to be using today this library instead of using my usual FreeJS template, but you would see that it's not really that different, you know, because some of the people keep on asking me about the templates, uh, the FreeJS templates that I'm using, but it's really, really default things uh, in there. So without further ado, let's get started. Well, hello to California and India, and immediately we get like almost the opposite locations. So how do you use this SSAAM library? So, well, you could obviously install it, and but I already have it installed, and this is just the, the only thing that I need to type uh, to, to run it. Just npm create SSAAM latest, which is not the cheat folder, but on the desktop. npm create... I'm going to share the link to the GitHub or the npm uh, down below, but here I'm just going to trying to trying to get the shout out i believe it's still in in in, in beta and i hope you the ink will be happy for new users and hopefully they will come all right uh 
name your projects. Well, I'm going to name it Two Dimensionals SDF. It's going to be what, what I'm going to be playing today with. And let's pick the 3JS. You could see that there's an OGL template as well. And I believe you could add with the pull requests any template that you like or use your own template as well. So I'm going to be using 3JS and there's a TypeScript. And do I need the full screen shader? I think not. I'm just going to use the basic cube. I need the animation. There's also Ligia connected in here, which is another nice library of the shaders that you could use. A lot of, a lot of useful shader functions. I'm not yet really uh, proficient with using the Ligia, but hopefully in the next streams. So for now, just the animations and let's get started. So I'm going to install all the depths for me. Yes, I'm using the Arc browser. Yeah, probably I will do more React Free Fiber videos. I, I actually just done the the short uh, experiments, uh, kind of a tutorial for the code drops, which was built on top of the Paul Henschel new uh, converted splats rendering for the React Free Fiber. So if you if you're interested in that kind of thing, just go into my Twitter or to the code drops directly and uh, read about that and watch the videos. So this is called Two Dimensional SDF, and let's get started. So I'm going to open the editor. Let's arrange the windows one more time. So I have it here. So the, the structure of, of the files is actually pretty uh, straightforward. There's a source folder which has the index TypeScript file and then the shaders file. And well, this is it. There's an HTML file which we don't really need to touch uh, because it's just, just outputting the canvas for us and that's it. So uh, in the end, I only need the index uh, TypeScript, JavaScript file, and then the, uh, the shaders files. That's all I need. And this, this is usually what, what's enough to produce my kind of videos, right? Just a couple of shaders and one JavaScript file. And let's, let's make this bigger. Let's make this smaller. Again. You might want to subscribe to the ink because he's he's really producing a lot of tutorials and useful things for the generative artists and everybody concerned about graphics pretty much everybody who's watching my channel as well all right uh so i don't need to start so it's going to be npm run dev and we should get something right so this is what we get by default in this template well not that much of a difference right and if we look into the code, just real fast, the overview is like 78 lines, whole thing. And what it does, if you've been using the canvas sketch, it's pretty similar structure. We have the uh, like the sketch, uh, the highest uh, hierarchy module, the sketch, which has the, the canvas, the width, the height, all the variables that you need to produce some graphics on the screen, and then which have a basic initialization of the 3GS scene, like the camera, the renderer, the orbit controls, so we can like rotate this thing and the scene, and then like one basic mesh built with the shader material, pretty much. And then we have the like resize and load things, but the most importantly, we have the render function, which runs with the request animation frame and well, does what it does. This, I believe, is only for um, the usual 3GS, but from what I understand, you could probably easily add another template and then use the React Tree Fiber. There's probably going to be some, some things like to connect the canvas DOM to this whole thing, but I believe this should be possible. Once you're uh, able to isolate the rendering function in here, mm. Yeah, now that you've mentioned that, I can see that there's a little well, a trouble here because in React Free Fiber, you don't really get uh, this like render or uh, request animation frame thing exposed right away. So you would need probably to do that just to get advantage of uh, uh, this module because not only it's it well, kind of a 3JS template, the more importantly, this thing actually produces uh, like the videos or the images. Because when I hit uh, like let's say command save, I'm probably gonna save uh, the image here. Or if I hit the command shift S, 
I'm gonna say I'm gonna output the video here, and in this case it's gonna be WebM format, or you could easily convert it to MP4 as well. Anyway, so this is gonna be the duration, how many frames per second you have. So this is a really useful thing, and this is the thing that I've been using like for past couple of uh, months probably to produce some I don't know stories for the Instagram or just the gifs that I post on Twitter. Anyway, a lot of a lot of introduction, right? And you might ask me, like, what exactly are we going to do today? Because it's not really yet clear, right? Is it going to be this cube or something more complicated? And it's going to be something a little bit more complicated, but not so much. So first of all, uh, today I wanted to play with the... Uh, let's just do this. Get rid of one additional variable here. Make it simpler. So uh, I had this one idea that I used uh, like a long time ago. Where do I get this? JavaScript or no? Sure. Uniform is not okay. Yeah. Like that. Now it's all good. All right. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. Where do we start? So let's start with a lot of planes. It's just the usual plane buffer geometry. So instead of uh, box geometry, I kind of want to from 3JS so I can use anything plane geometry uh, one by one. You can maybe take it two by two. So we have this plane. Then what I want to do, I want to look at uh, XYZ. So I want to look straight at it, so I want to move the camera so I'm looking straight at this thing. Maybe not so straight, let's, let's get a little bit of an angle. And then I would like to create a lot of those planes, first of all. <laughs> well, I don't yet know, but if you've seen this story on my Instagram, one of the latest ones, this is what I'm going to be creating. Kind of, I want to create a nice animation. This is my goal for today. Uh, we might go with different directions there and you might even throw ideas and we might uh, implement your ideas. I have the general direction in my mind, but then after that it's just wherever we go. And then I also wanted to uh, add this additional multi-window thing, which you've probably seen uh, everywhere, everybody trying already. But this is my first stream since uh, it arrived a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to try it as well. So I'm going to create the animation and then I'm going to make this animation multi-window. Then, all right, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, I'm going to create uh, like how many planes do I have? Uh, let's say, I don't know, 50. So, uh, for I'm going to create a, a plane. Okay, the co pilot is really trying to think ahead of me. It's not really what I wanted to create, but I'm always curious, like, where, what direction the copilot is going to with these ones. So let's not go with this one. So first of all, I'm going to create the material. I want to create it. Uh, uh, I already have the material, right? So I want to just create the plane. So mesh is going to be new three. Kind of the main idea is to show how the two-dimensional SDFs can produce some nice graphics in here. So it's going to be, uh, what's that? First, geometry, second is material. Geometry, material, meshes, push, mesh, and then let's add this one to the scene, but also Z is going to be equal, uh, yeah, something like this. So now we have the stack of those planes. I would kind of also not really important for my animation, but at least we're going to be able to see it uh, like from different directions. So uh, uh, I produced this number, which I'm not really using. So this is the opposite uh, way that I wanted them to be multiplied. So now we have a lot of those planes. I kind of actually wanted the camera to be with the angle, so we will be able to see all of them. This is just a stack of the planes. 
Now what I want to do, I want to start cutting some creative holes in those planes. And how exactly to do this? First of all, I'm going to Google what is two-dimensional SDFs, which is, I believe, not that often being used, or not that often like having the, the attention. Mostly people do the array merge and they use the three-dimensional SDFs that Iniho Kiles already calculated and created a nice article about that. But I kind of want to use uh, the two-dimensional thing today. And let's do this. I'm going to go to the fragment shader. And in here, well, let's copy the function, the circle. What else do I want to do? The, the rounded box or the um, just the usual box? Just the usual box that I want to use here as well. These are just the, uh, the functions which basically describe the distance to each point in the two-dimensional space towards the shape. So in this case, this is just the circle shape. In this case, it's a kind of a box which we set, the dimensions of which we set in here. So uh, like one of the variables is the dimensions of a box, I believe. Right, 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 right. So let's uh, get closer to the thing. Mm. First of all, let's calculate uh, what's it going to be. So the first float scene is going to be the SD circle, PUV 0 0.5, let's say. What's that going to be? Let's see. Well, Jason, maybe it's going to be helpful for you today what I'm going to show you, but I just hope so. So, all right, so we have this scene thing. So let's output this scene and see how it really looks like. So what this SDF is about. So we don't really see mm, much yet. And this is because, first of all, I need to uh, normalize my UVs. So I'm going to create the UV, which is going to be VUV minus basically center of it. And then if I calculate the scene now, like the SDF, I'm going to be calculating it with this and then I also make the radius smaller and then you could already see like the, the black basically being zero, which means that it's the distance from some circle and the radius of the circle is 0 0.2 and those 0 0.2 are actually in terms of the UVs, which is like minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5 right now on my screen. I know a lot of numbers, but this is how it works. So let's also tr try to produce the, the SDF for the box in here. And let's see how it's going to look like. So the, the SDF for the box uh, kind of also needs just, just one variable, right? So the first one is the P and the second one is the dimensions, which should be two dimensional thing, the dimensions of the, of the box. So let's see how the thing looks like. Well, not really surprisingly, we do see the box in here as well. Let's make it maybe smaller so it's more obvious where the box is really is. So now I can start uh, trying to cut these things. So first of all, uh, I believe it's better to make it transparent. Which already is starting to look kind of trippy, like a tunnel into the darkness, right? Which really we haven't done anything special yet, right? I basically calculated one function and set it as the thing. And also, I, okay, I accidentally set the transparency for, for all of them, <laughs> right? Which actually looked so cool, right? So maybe I should just leave it at that. This is definitely not what I planned. Right, right, that's all it sees. I, there's a couple of different approaches to the multi-window thing, but first uh, let's create the animation, and then I'm going to move to the multi-window. The animation not really that complicated, to be honest, but I'm just uh, taking time to explain, and hopefully new people will get passionate about creating things, and maybe somebody else will learn things too. I just love uh, like these kind of images, you know? Like when uh, two semi-transparent boxes overlap, you get this really nice pattern. I, think I should play with it more okay um, boom, 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 boom. so where do we go uh, first of all um, let's cut the things uh, out so if scene is uh, let's say below zero I'm just gonna discard it 
and we already starting to get this kind of tunnel like we just cut the hole in this thing and if i replace it with a circle basically we're gonna get the cut the hole with a circle so what else what else what else then i don't really want uh, my like to color my scene with these how do I really want to color it? Now, the first idea that I did uh, when I tried these kind of experiments was actually, why not we just copy this coloring? Because this is this looks really nice. I really love how Iniho uh, like colors mm, mostly for educational purposes and for visualizing things. Oh, he colors the two-dimensional SDFs. You can't do that with three dimensionals, unfortunately, but you can still do this with two dimensions. So let's just get into the shader toy and see how he does that it's uh well i would say not doesn't look really that fancy the uh <laughs> like the code that does that because it's pretty much a couple of transformations on one of the variables and this is it so first we color things uh, depending on this distance field that we get from our scene so basically i could do this and i could just do floor d equals scene and then I could get away without even replacing any variables. And then I could probably just output the things in here. Yeah, and it, well, does just that. It also kind of shows you how you can create those borders on the edge of the SDF. So it's already creating things. So now mm, what I want to do, because uh, right now they all are similar, right? I want to create a, a different variable for each of my uh, planes. So instead of using this thing, I'm going to just do kind of get material. And in here, I'm going to put the level and uh, well, pretty much this, except I'm going to do the U level thing here, and this is going to be the level variable that I'm transferring in here. I don't need the uniforms. So instead of uh, using this static material, I'm going to do the get material, and this is going to be I divided by number. And probably I want this value. No, maybe I, I I could use it as is. So because I have kind of five, uh, I have 50 of them, but then I also divide it by 10. So I'm not sure what my loop is. Is it 10 or is it 50 now? Anyway, just not divided by number for now. And in here, I'm going to use this material and materials push mat. And then, well, sh should be pretty much the same. Material is not defined. That's because, uh, where do I use this material? Okay, here. So in here, materials for each, it's going to be something, something, something. Okay, where do I have material again? Okay, there was still uh, like a debug thing in here. So, all right. So this is what we have for now. Now they uh, they have uh, the U level uh, uniform, and it's different because I'm transferring this thing. Uh, right. So now let's use uh, this uniform U level, and then. Uh, Okay, let's. Uh, I have to make a decision right now. Like, what's going to be the loop for me? So, let's say the loop is going to be uh, 30. So, it's just a kind of a random number, uh, which is going to be like how many uh, different planes I will have until they repeat itself. And then the number could be actually like any, let's say 90. So, it's really a lot of them. It's only 90 numbers. And then mm, maybe it's time to move my camera back to the center. Right, it looks a little bit trippy, so let's just move it slightly. We have this like more pattern in here right now because we have a lot of planes. Once we get closer there, I think it's going to be better for us. So maybe camera position is going to be uh, 
not really that far away, but just uh, really close. Um, something like that, yeah. So we're getting close. Oh, sorry guys, I just got the notification that the air raid alert is over in Kiev. Okay, because I started the stream in the middle of that air, air raid alert. Which is kind of uh, the thing that we have here, and at this point, not too many people care in the capital city about that. Being it said, oh, good, I don't know. Okay. Mm, we have this, and I have this U thin, U thin, U thin, U level. I have the U level now, and I can now try to use this U level. So instead of using just one scene here, I'm gonna do uh, the float scene equals mix between uh, the circle, the box, and then the U-level. Let's see what's gonna happen now. Okay, uh, yeah, I have two scenes now. Uh, now what's wrong? Lot scene... Where did I mess it up? Already, okay, just this. Right, and we're starting to see some trippy patterns already. A lot of trivia patterns, actually. And, well, believe it or not, this is actually uh, the square in there. But the, the, the thing that happens to this square is actually we, the mix function usually like mixes mm, two values where the third one is between 0 and 1. But now this value is, well, more than 0 and 1, actually. I could use this effect uh, to fix this issue. So we will see how it, this circle actually goes into the perfect square and then we go back to the circle and then back to the perfect square so we can fix uh, this whole thing by actually using uh, the sign function in here just to loop this whole thing so instead of uh, this i'm gonna be just using the sign and do i have the pi in here thanks copilot and then I could use uh, the sine multiplied by pi in here, multiplied by 2, which is going to be between minus 1 and 1. So I'm going to add the uh, 1 in here and multiply it by 0 0.5. And now we're going to get the kind of a perfect loop between uh, like the circle, the square, and back to the circle and from the square, right? So it's getting kind of trippy, uh, but... I don't really like the coloring now, right? So and to color these things, first of all, I'm going to try the Inihokiles palettes. Basically, uh, this, this function that I will be using. So, back three palette. Actually, Copilot knows about this function already, so it pretty much helps me to create it. But then I also need to create the A, B, C, D's values. And uh, I believe the one that I used was uh, this one, I think. So I'm going to use the palettes to color all those things and to make them look nicer. Like this, B, C, D. All right, uh, so I believe this is it for the palettes. And now I could actually just run the function, right? So instead of outputting like uh, these colors, because we still have these uh, like uh, nice uh, lines or something, what I want to do, I actually. I'm going to still use this math, but in a different way. So I'm going to use the default color. Like, let's say it's going to be white. But then, uh, like, what all of this does, actually? Like, we could just comment it one by one to see what each of them does. It. So what does uh, this do, for example? This makes it darker, right? So what does this do? I believe one of them is creating lines. Now we don't have uh, any lines left. And the last one is creating the border. All right, so if I just leave this, I'm going to get some kind of repeating lines. 
So this does the repeating lines and this does uh, the black border. Oh no, not, not this. This does the black border. Right. So this is what I need. I kind of want to create this, this, this border thing for each of them to make it a little bit uh, like darker or something. So um, let's say the default color is going to be white. And then I'm going to create like this dark border. I also want to bring back the, the opacity in here. So this is uh, like the white ones now. And then I get in. I know it, it's already look, look, looking beautiful, right? I, I mean, I love how the, the SDF is producing this natural looking, uh, I don't know, shadows or outputs, just in outputs. All right. Hmm. What else? What else? What else? I kind of kind of want to maybe I should multiply this. going to happen. So we just create like more uh, harsh. The harsher borders will be created because the value is going to increase faster. So it means this value is going to decrease faster. And this means we're going to have like smaller borders. And if we just you know, go to extreme, we're just going to get like a slight borders on each of them. But I think uh, five or six should be enough, enough of a border. We don't really have the, um, the anti-aliasing yet, but it could be added there. Well, the objective is my is in my Instagram, but we we are we are getting there. We are kind of close already. So, um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, now I want to use the palettes. So, free color is going to be the palette. We could use U level. Uh, we'll use uh, fract from U level because I want this variable to be between zero and one, and also repeat it. Okay, uh, and let's just output this color. Why do I have a mistake here? The palette takes the float. What's the mistake? The palette no matching overloaded function. Mm. T A B C D. All this seems to be right. What the hell is running here? Uh, okay, so 70 line 75. There's something to convert from flow to three dimensional vector of flow. Where do, I, where do I really convert anything in here? I didn't think I convert anything uh, at all. Oh, oh, yeah. Ah. So I, I, I used the variable d, which is uh, already used in here. Uh, this is the problem, and so it's a, it's it's not three dimensional. It's flawed now, and yeah, and this is where I ran into the trouble in here. So I shouldn't really be calling that D. So and then uh, flawed discard from what's that? So 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 when you type DD, it tries to do the discard. All right, now it's working properly. I don't yet see the color. Let's see it. Which is starting to look kind of nice immediately, right? So you just basically copy the palette file, and this is what you get. I believe it should be also looking nice from uh, like from different angles, because uh, I, th I think this is one of my favorite palettes uh, out of all of these. They all are nice. There are much more, like an infinite uh, actually amount of those palettes that you could produce with this formula, but this is one of my favorite ones. All right, but. You know what's going to happen if we just add those two colors? So it's going to add the color to this one. All right, maybe I should multiply this one with something smaller. Hmm. Not quite, not quite, quite getting this, but yeah, I believe I believe this is it. Yeah. So we kind of have the white. Uh, each of those meshes are white. Maybe the distance between. Uh, mm, between each plane should be a little bit greater right now. And poof, 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 poof. Maybe like this. So we'll be able to see the actual edge of those things. And also, uh, will anti-aliasing help with this thing? 
Not sure, but... No, it doesn't really help, but uh, what could help is not using really a discard, but using the transparency in there. Maybe we will get to that in the end. So the next thing that I want to do, the final touches to this one, is to actually play with it. So first of all, uh, the animation. Uh, the whole thing, uh, like this canvas sketch thing, is built on top of the like playhead variable, which runs between 0 and 1, 0 and 1, all the time. So in here, First of all, I'm going to update uh, the just, just playhead. So I'll update, update the time function for my uh, meshes. And second, I want to move uh, my camera. So uh, what I want to do, I want to move my camera towards, uh, I'll just towards the front, I believe. So poof, poof, poof. Camera, position Z, playhead, and then I need to figure out what the loop is, uh, like how far we should go until it loops. Because I have uh, this, uh, where is my loop? In here, all right, it's right there. So this is, uh, I divided by 30, I believe, should, okay, not a 2, okay. This is the not not the right way, and then I believe it should be, because I'm using the orbit controls. Uh, I should be also using the mm, maybe not. So I could just uh, look at my camera at some distance point. Z is going to be equal. Or maybe just hundred. Yeah, probably just the other way around. And then I should move my camera. I'm a bit confused with where my camera is looking at. Camera position Z. This is the other way, which also looks kind of nice. So the playhead runs between 0 and 1, and now I believe I'm just uh, going in the wrong direction. So camera look at xyz 100 but it should be should be correct i don't know what's wrong in, in here maybe that's because i'm using the orbit controls okay let's disable orbit controls for a second no that didn't help much maybe now oh yeah yeah, that's probably because orbit controls and I have to change the camera position through orbit controls, but not directly through the, through the camera. Which is also a nice thing to know, right? So there's some... Mm, let's in increase the speed of my loop. So I need to figure out what the loop is. So 30... So it's probably 6, right? Which is the loop for me. Right, so now it's looped, even though it's kind of fast, it's looped, and you could see only the difference like in the like in the end that something is reappearing. But all the rest is actually properly looped. Now I can uh, well bring back the speed. And we have this tunnel thing. So now what I want to do, I want to hide this bug, because I can't really produce uh, the, the infinite amount of those planes, so I want to hide it. And I also want to add the noise. So let's hide it and add the noise in there. Uh, first of all, to hide it. Uh, very in world position. Which is going to be this. So we're just calculating the world position of each vertex on our screen. And then I could use it in the fragment shader. Well, first one, I need to declare this, and then I could use the like uh, the distance. Dist is going to be the length of camera position minus world position. Well, I don't need to. And then I could use some smooth step function. So let's say mm, what distance 
should we use here uh, to fade so it's going to be float fade smooth step and then mm, i don't know then five yeast now let's output this thing let's see what's what's that actually is there this is just distance even working for us uh fade smooth tap dist dist is gotta be the plot yes i believe it's working so because the camera is moving and we don't really see this gradient okay we actually see it's moving yeah but it's kind of moving and staying in place so with this i can i, I believe i can hide yeah we, we don't see uh yeah so uh the thing is all the things reappearing in the back at the end of the loop are actually colored black and this means that i have a perfect control over this reappearing thing and i can just i can just hide it so i can basically do something like rgb multiply it with fade and those are going to be just black right so they are, they are reappearing but they are just black and i can now set the well the color of my whole scene to black and nobody will ever see the end of this loop, right? And I can even, I, I, well, if we want it to be to go deeper, we can actually uh, um, what create more planes, I believe, right? So we can get instead of ninety, we can get like hundred and twenty, and then instead of using this distance, if we just used um, maybe like fourteen, and then like seven. Yeah, so we can move further away. Now uh, let's experiment a little bit and add the multi-window thing. So um, what else? I can multiply this with three. You know, once you get uh, anything, you can just throw random numbers anywhere. Uh, multiplying anything will always do something. Like, what the hell is this even? I haven't had this plan, trust me, guys. But now we have this thing. And if I actually increase this is kind of fractal thing and oh i i know what, what we can throw into these uh, things to create it even nicer uh, animation so let's get the rotate 2d function a jlsl one let's get two dimensional rotation <coughs> this is basically the creative coding right you don't you don't even know where you're gonna get with all of this all right and then mm, depending on my level of the thing uh, let's rotate this uh, whole thing and remember how we started it's just just a bunch of planes and simple shader functions so mm, i'm gonna rotate this one yeah so this function basically returns me already rotated uh, two-dimensional vector the first one is the vector, the second one has got to be u level multiplied with two pi's. So, uh, yeah, it's getting crazier now. It's, well, kind of lost this feel, so maybe. I don't know, I don't know. The planes could be bigger here, right? And, well, it's still kind of a random thing in here. Uh, I lost it here. Maybe smaller numbers and you could still see the square right at some point the sdf is actually a perfect square and at some point it's a perfect circle but then in the middle it's just craziness right well i'm actually multiplying the same thing with like like the same thing so i could just as might as well change only this value and yeah getting that so i believe because uh, the square and the circle are actually symmetrical i don't really need to rotate it two pies i can just rotate it like half of the pie because well the square is still the square when i rotate it half of the pie i'm gonna get a little bit nicer smoother things in there which are also nice and then you could either multiply it with some small value and it's going to be real smooth or with some big value and it's going to be some well, craziness in there uh is it the point uh, where i want to do oh, okay the noise the noise mm, jlsl noise the noise and then the multi-window this is what we're going to do mm. i need to throw in noise in there it should be nice should be <laughs> 
All right, this should do. So this one is a C noise and it takes three dimensional input. C noise that takes three dimensional input. So I'm gonna uh, not gonna repeat the, my old mistakes. I'm gonna call this one free n and I'm gonna use the <laughs> C noise and should I use this U level multiplied by pi, which copilot says maybe. So now I have this variable and I could maybe calculate it before this. And uh, this is always a tricky part. Is it between minus one and one or is it always positive? I believe it should be between minus one and one. And I could just maybe uh, do something like this and let's see how this is going to produces something even more crazier. Right, not yet that crazy, maybe more noise. Oh, but I'm not adding it at the proper, uh, not the proper part where I'm adding this one. So something is uh, yet, something is still wrong. Uh, I'm not sure what. So maybe I should get back to like, uh, my circles things and maybe smaller noise maybe I should also multiply these UVs because probably the values are uh, too small or something in here was the uh, yeah probably the the frequency of the noise is quite small in there so let's multiply this one with 10 or something oh yeah 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 now we're starting to get something in the trippy direction and then I could actually use time here, but this is going to be way too trippy, I think. Maybe time multiplied by 10. Wow. Uh, well, this is crazy already, right? And it's, well up to who it is to decide when the craziness should should end in the in here well i believe this is good enough for uh, the multi-window setup now at least right so we have some kind of real weird uh, uh, perfect loop with this tunnel and noise thing so we can actually well hello avocode this is what we are creating today we don't really know what we are creating today which is the truth All right to the multi-window setup, right. So, um, mm, this is actually uh, so uh, stupidly simple with 3.js that I wasn't even sure I should include it, but then decided, well, I, as well, if I'm creating some other animation, I might as well mm, do this. So in 3.js, for the camera mm, docs, uh, like 3.js camera, let's say perspective camera, Camera offset, or oh, how do you call it? Uh, offset. Let's look for the offset. There's a film offset, which is also kind of curious. What is what this does? Horizontal off center offset, and the same unit. All right. Kind of curious to try this in future, but then there's a. Mm, Clear view offset, set view offset. All right, so this is a set view offset. Let me know if you tried that already, Jason. But we're going to be trying this. So uh, this is the first idea. So we need to use this set view function, set view offset thing uh, inside my loop in here. Where's my loop? Uh, this is my loop. So I'm going to use this set offset function. And this means uh, with every uh, like resize, I should be getting new variables in there, right? Because, okay, let's tr just try that. Camera set view offset. And then uh, a lot of variables in there. Like, first of all, the initial, like the, the whole scene uh, renders. It's going to be window inner, uh, not actually window, it's going to be window screen width. It's like the width of my screen. Then it's going to be window screen height then it's gonna be what's what's the next one x and y is a horizontal offset and the okay so let's say those are zero and then well 
let's just use what Copilot says to use. See what's going to happen now. So now we see the scene is kind of distorted now. So what I want to use, I want to use the uh, uh, screen uh, left thing, right? So it's window screen left thing, which uh, the Ben Stahl, who is original creator, I'm going to link it as well because he, he was the, the, the first one to like produce this thing lately, which blow up. So this is not really a new trick, but uh, it, it blew up with his demo. And um, probably... Yes, yeah, so I'm right. So it's just screen left property. It's a window screen left property. So I'm going to use uh, in this here, right? Am I right? Yeah. Window screen left. Window screen top. And then here is just window inner, a lot of windows, right? Inner, inner width and inner height. Let's see what's going to happen now. Get back to the demo and now it's starting to look weird right you might already guess what's going to happen next and believe it or not this is kind of it i mean uh, the other thing uh, that we need to do here yeah because right now we are running on the playhead but uh to synchronize between those two windows like the animations are perfectly aligned but not yet synchronized to synchronize i'm gonna do the date date what's that get time yeah and then all of this modulo one is it the uh how do you do the date get time thing uh, or is it just the date time I believe there was some some kind of easy like easy workaround uh, to do to just to get the time or oh, date now it's date now date now uh, okay so maybe ten thousand in here so now we are taking the global time in there instead of uh, just the local playhead time which is dependent on the time when I started the browser window and now this should be perfectly aligned. I think it's kind of ease, except the, there's a top bar, so things like that. Let's open another window and let's resize this. Let's get another one. And it's kind of ridiculously simple, right? With 3JS. Because it can already have this functionality almost built in with the set view offset we can even we can even make it uh, like smooth like uh, the band style did and how to do this <laughs> basically we need to animate uh, the screen uh, left and the screen top these two variables so i'm gonna do the mm, let's uh, yeah uh, but vector two and then uh, what else what else what else I need to target this. So lerp and then uh, this is going to be the screen left and screen top thing in there. And in here I'm going to use target X, target Y. But you can see already it's it's kind of becoming smoother. So if I now move things, it's just going to move smooth. that cool i believe it is oh there's there's some sidebars in there yeah if i remove sidebars it's it really becomes kind of perfect right uh, let's let's align the window at the bottom here yeah oh my god this is freaking immersive now i don't know why but i mean this is the same animation, but when you when you run it in the multiple windows, it just becomes uh, ridiculously cooler than it used to be, right? I mean, I don't really know 
what's the useful thing about this in the end, right? Because uh, who would uh, want to run multiple windows except that you are getting creative and crazy with this? But then, well, at least I had some fun with it and then this could already be the usage of it because we had all had some fun. We've talked about this thing, we tried to recreate this thing. Isn't this the useful thing in the end? Not directly as the money, but, well, indirectly as our, I don't know, mental health, at least. Or the good way to live your life, proceed with your life. But this is uh, really how it is. I mean, in the original animation, I think, uh, well, Ben Stahl, Ben Stahl, I'm, I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong. I think he actually... Mm. I think it's not uh all right I, I think I have to go uh, it's we are this way oh, did, did I mess up the uh I think uh, oh, it's Bjorn Stahl. I'm I'm so sorry. Uh, 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 apologies. It's Bjorn Stahl, and yeah, I think he shared uh, the. I think it's uh, exactly uh, somewhere here. Where's the GitHub? I don't see GitHub here, but I believe it's the same handle. So. I think uh, he used a different approach because no, all right. I think he used different approach uh, to that one. Uh, okay, maybe just multi window. Ah, <laughs> so it's somewhere there. But I think he used a different approach for this one because he he had a couple of objects. And he had to calculate each instance of the objects, like in this global scene. But this could, well, I'm not sure if he used the, the set view offset for the camera because it's really getting, creates a really straightforward thing for this. Recapture the usage. Oh. Or maybe they meant that to to read the capture, you have to open a couple of windows or you have to move them just to see the capture because it's being drawn in this like screen space. And if the, you're a bot, you obviously wouldn't be able to see the capture in the screen space, or maybe like connected from a couple of different browser windows, something like that. This would be my guess. So yeah, uh, all right, let's get back to this thing. So this is well, what I wanted to create today. And this actually, uh, well, I could end this stream like any minute, Maybe just a little more noise is what I want to add here. Because really, I mean, I, I could both end it any minute, but I could also continue it for days because it, you can't really stop with this one. I also tried to actually draw some shapes and there's a way that you could draw some shapes. So let's say, um, let's say uh, the human image is, is, is something that you want to create. I think I had... Uh, yeah, so let's say I have this uh, this shape and I want to draw it here. How do I do this? There's a image uh, SDF uh, library by the um, Matt Deloria. And this is how you do this image SDF. This is going to be the last thing I'm going to do today. And uh, it's a JPEG. Okay, so I have to convert this one to the JPEG. Right. So it produced me some kind of uh, like SDF image, basically converting this image to the sign a distant field function. And I could go to my two dimensional SDF. Copy this Atlas SDF. All right. Oh, my window setup is messed up, but then let's get in here. I really have a lot of things now on the screen. Uh, let's get in here, import G from Atlas uh, SDF PNG that was, and then 
right before the get material i'm gonna create the texture is gonna be this it's gonna be texture let's get to the fragment shader uniform sampler 2d with you atlas then i should be able to just sample it right mm. it's gonna be texture to the u atlas not the uv really but the uv in this case and not the rgv but actually i think it's just semi-transparent right it's not really even black i could see my no i can't see my icons on the desktop i could almost see my icons on the desktop right the blurred version i mean it's transparent it's not black so i could should take the alpha of these ones and then i could uh, what what i could do here now we kind of uh okay i i, I will remove the camera offset for a second because it, it's getting harder to to output things so i could well, it, it's, this is also kind of cool because I can see the shadow of this uh, <laughs> of this person thing. Uh, okay, this is this is run. This is run. Get me back my preview, right? So maybe I should also scale it and remove rotation just for a second. I need to remove rotation in my shader. Uh, UV okay, multiply it with zero, and then uh, scale this atlas. So this is going to be uh, UV minus 0 0.5 multiplied by 3 plus and 5, just scaling it, just making this uh, human smaller. right and then i could use this atlas in the same way that i'm using here the circle and the sdf texture and maybe just like this will it produce something okay let's also remove this now this is well a little too trippy even for me <laughs> and we broke the loop i believe somewhere there but we still have this human morphing into whatever it is because we also have the noise and the well this is crazy this is becoming crazy maybe like this so we have noise in some places but also have this uh, it's we still have this human right it's in there in some tunnels which you can get to this human i mean it's crazy so well i guess i gotta end with this <laughs> And we could actually morph a couple of uh, like shapes, right? One of them could be human and the other could be, I don't know. I don't know what the other should be. I mean, the circle and this thing don't really... Didn't really work nice together. I mean, human morphing into circle doesn't really work that good. You could see, you could see the human morphing into the... <laughs> not the perfect combination. But it's still so much fun, right? I mean, even the cube, even without the rotation, it's it's actually looking so dope. Uh, what else? Okay, let's bring back the rotation. The rotation was extra nice. Yeah, this kind of... And then if we get back to, to those two-dimensional functions, there's actually... Uh, where is that? We get uh, there's a lot of shapes which you could experiment with like we could, could take in the triangle might as well maybe we should take the triangle this is going to be the last thing no, no this is definitely the last thing <laughs> let's morph the triangle into a circle or something so it's going to be triangle and it just takes the radius right it only takes the radius for the triangle Let's see how the triangle will work with this setup. 
I mean, well, pretty kind of obvious that we have the three-way symmetry now, but this thing is actually breaking it apart, right? If we do the minus, we're going to have the circle morphing into like three kind of symmetry things. All right, all right. so it's this is endless thing as you, as you might expect already. So I hope you like this thing. I'm going to bring back uh, the marvelous camera offset. And let's end with this. So I'm going to open another window. Yay, we got it. So I hope you liked this stream and how do you I hope you had some fun because I definitely had some fun. Like playing with these things is just an eternal source of, uh, I don't know, energy and producing different kind of graphics. I'm going to read the channel real fast and let's finish this stream. <clears throat> yeah, this is kind of interesting, like one of the screens having a lock. And also, I think uh, the way that they synchronized uh, the screens is usually through the local storage. So you save something to the local storage, so the other screens already have access to this local storage, and you can uh, play with this, some, some, do some play with this. Hello, Anderson. Big hug to Brazil as well, and to UK. Yeah, 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 right. You, you mentioned that yourself. I just came to read this one. Uh, yeah, well, thank you guys for the kind words. Shader Draw is amazing. Just go there and try things and learn from the best shader writers out there. Yeah, people are crazy skillful. And shaders are magical. I would also kind of want to give another shout out because I really love uh, how what we built today is built on top of the work of a lot of people, like the Dye Ink, uh, which template whose template we, we we've been using, then the Matt Deloria, who's well inspired that template, and a lot of generative things, and uh, also inspired the SDF, created the SDF library, and a lot of things. What else? Also the Nihok Ilias uh, calculations and functions. And also I wanted to give the shout out for the Xor dev because it amazes me. His skills in shader writing are just amazing me. And he also runs, uh, I believe it's free mailing list about shaders with really nice tutorials. So if you want to learn shaders, just give Xor dev a follow. And because I think he's amazing and he deserves it. And I keep on admiring his uh, shirt. Uh, no shirt things how do you call it the golfing thing with the shaders that he does like for example like this kind of thing like there's just a couple of lines of shader code and then you get some nice animation of this like what the fuck really this is the whole code that produces this thing i mean is it even legal right it is not okay yeah share the bjorn's rebel because i, I kind of <laughs> was confused looking for it I might as well share it below just so anybody can learn from it. And well, that's it from me for today, guys. Hope you loved that. And well, see you in the next one. Hope to get more streaming because I kind of changed my attitude to streaming just to have more fun. And I hope, let me know if you loved this because it wasn't really the most complicated thing that we've done, but it was uh, the thing that, well, kept me passionate. And yeah, thank you guys. So, Take care, keep safe, don't forget to say that you love them to the people that you actually love and say all the kind words and be kind to each other and well, wishing you a great week and Slava Ukraini! See you! <laughs>